Mary Poppins, Jr. We're so excited to present this show to you. They have worked really, really hard. We've had an amazing faculty and a bunch of amazing parents that have helped and volunteered, including Miss Francie, Miss Kira, and of course, our fearless leader, um, the amazing art director, Miss Bradley Benjamin. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming out tonight to support our incredibly talented cast. It was four weeks ago from today that we started rehearsals if you believe it or not. <laughs> and they have worked so hard within the last four weeks. I believe we had a total of 18 rehearsals, so not very many. And the script was about 125 pages. So a big script for a very short amount of time. <laughs> and each and every one of our cast members who range from the age, what, six? Six, six to 18 <laughs> have done an incredible job putting this show together. So please give them your support tonight by applauding, laughing, and <laughs> enjoying the show, right? So um, have a great time, and this is Mary Poppins Jr. <laughs> A daughter, a son The threads of their lives are all raveling undone Something is needed to twist them as tight As a string you might use when you're flying a kite Chim chim honey, chim chim to reach chim chim George, I'm afraid Katie Nana has left Cherry Tree Lane for good. Oh, Coat? Cool. <laughs> right what? away, Mr. Banks. Winifred, you can get six nines in the last four months, and they've all been unqualified disasters. There's a briefcase. If only we could find someone like your old nanny. Umbrella? Right away, Mr. Banks. You remain alive can manage Miss Andrews to answer ethics. Besides, we could never afford someone of her caliber. Now state an advertisement in the Times, stating Jane and Michael Banks require the best possible nanny at the lowest possible wage. Father, we've written our own advertisement. What on earth? Please, George, I think we should hear it. <sighs> if you want this choice position, have a cheery disposition. Rosy cheeks, no more. That's the point I pronounce.
I've come in answer to the advertisement. Well, an advertisement. Where am I an advertisement? Now, let me see. Plays games, all sorts, which I most certainly can. Take us on outings, give us treats. Michael, that's our advertisement! Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. There's no objection on that score, I hope. Oh, none at all. <laughs> but I'll take this up with Mrs. Banks. Nothing domestic has anything to do with me. And don't forget the references. I make it a rule never to give references. Oh, I see. I'll see the children now. Thank you. Oh, of course. You'll find the very nice children. Now this is, oh, uh, Mary Poppins. Jane, don't stare. And close your mouth, Michael. We are not codfish. Now, best foot forward. Spit spot. Mrs. Brill, we have a new nanny. She passed the interview then. Or I did. A very tidy nursery, I must say. Tidier than I was expecting. Now, who's responsible for that? Mrs. Me, Br I am. Like to keep things neat. Do you indeed? Well, I look forward to making use of that. If there's one thing I appreciate, it's a child whose words I can depend on. Now, first things first. I always say the proper place to hang a hat is on a hat stand. <laughs> We will keep an eye on this one. She's tricky. <laughs> Mary Poppins, how did you know what we wanted in a nanny when we made our list? Your list? I am not an item in the weekly shop, thank you very much. Then how did you come then? It was as if the wind just blew you here. Well, it did. Now stand over there. Just as I thought, a noisy, mischievous, troublesome little boy. You're making that up. A noisy, mischievous, trouble. No, you. Thoughtless, short-tempered, and untidy. I don't believe you. Let me see. What about your measurement, Mary Poppins? I'm practically perfect in every way. Practically perfect. So Chim chim charoo. I does what I likes and I likes what I do. Today I'm a scriba, and as you can see, a scriba's an artist of highest degree. And it's all me own work from me own memory. Stay right where you are. I know that silhouette anywhere. 
Mary Poppins. It's nice to see you, Bert. Well, I must say, you do look swell. He can't know you. You've only just arrived. I wasn't born one minute before I walked into your house, Michael Banks. Have you met these two, Bert? I've seen him run about chasing a kite. It isn't a real one. So, what are you up to? Mary Poppins says it's a game. It's called a walk in the park. Some game. I'd rather eat spinach. Come along, Bert. You can't come with us. You're too dirty. And we don't want to go to the sting park anyways. Well, of course you do. Because when you walk with Mary Poppins, you go to places you never even dreamed of. All that it takes is a spark. Then something, as plain as a park, becomes a wonderland. All you have to do is look anew, then you'll understand. Why, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. Mary makes your heart so light. Oh, really? When the day is gray and ordinary, Mary makes the sun shine bright. You do nonsense, Bert. Happiness is blooming all around her. The daffodils are smiling at the dark. I haven't the faintest idea. When what? Mary holds your hand, you feel so grand. Your heart starts beating like a big brass band. You have enough brass for all of us. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. No wonder that it's Mary that we love. Come on, you two. Michael wants to say goodnight. Tell them you've given me the message. Please, George. Oh, Daddy, we had the most wonderful day. You wouldn't have approved, but if you knew that, then why did you do it? Daddy, can I have a kite, a proper one? 
could you fly it? You can always teach me. When would I have the time to do that? Now will you please let me get on? Good night. Poor Michael. All he cares about is flying kites. I used to love flying kites at his age, but my nanny, Miss Anderson, frightened me out of it. Is it out of the question to do without a nanny? Don't be absurd. All the best of love nannies. So wives can do charity work, entertain. Which reminds me, how's your tea party coming on? I'm not sure. It seems so odd to send that invitation to people I hardly know. But the people you should know. Remember, by ye friends shall be judged. But that's the point. They're not my friends. Winifred, dearest, I'm only thinking of you. Are you going to say something to Mary Poppins about this afternoon? I don't think so. Very well. Just make sure she's doing things our way, not hers. Winds do change, tides can turn, sink or swim, see what you learn. Me, I was told when I was small, just learn a trade, so I learned them all. Chim chimini, chim chim chiri. and too hot to be iced, or touched for the matter. Are you quite sure you know how to ice it? Quite sure, and in case you're worried, I haven't been exchanged by the fairies for a total nincompoop. I'll just go up and check the drawing room. I'd like to be helpful. And I'd like to be rich, but destiny thought otherwise. <laughs> Mother wants you in the drawing room. She says you can tell Rabbi I what to do. Does she indeed? Please, Miss Brill, I don't mind honest. Okay, I'll give you one task and one task only. Put the icing tools next to the cake. Do you think you can manage that? Is that all? For you, yes. For me, no. I swear, a slave in ancient Rome was on a pleasure cruise compared to my life in this house. <sighs> Michael, why don't we make the icing? Because we don't know how. Don't be so feeble. Get the eggs and the flour. Are there eggs and icing? There are in mine. Roberta, I bring me the cake. <laughs> Mrs. Brill, go up and get rid What have you done? Roberta, I, Roberta, I, are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I don't think that will be necessary now. Children, you know how important my party is. You deserve some very nasty medicine. Just you two wait till bedtime. Oh, I don't think we should wait until then, now. We'll clear up, won't we? I'm not ill, I won't take it, and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your information is faulty. Open. But. It's strawberry ice. Now you. I'm not trying like strawberry ice. I'm not sure I care. Open. Lime cordial. Now off we go, you two. Michael, I know you like to keep things neat. Jane. I told you she was tricky. Why do we have to do it? Can't Roberta I wake it, do it when she wakes up? She is a servant. With that attitude, you'll get through a lot of stuff before you're very old. Besides, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and fun. The job's a game. And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake. A lark, a spree. It's very good to see that a spoonful of sugar helps Exactly. The honey bees that mix the nectar from the flower to the cup never turn by their thoughts into and fro. Because they take a little sip from every flower that they mix, and hence, and hence they, find they find their task is not a grind. For a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down.
off now, ma'am. Come along, spit spot. I'm sorry, ma'am. Apparently these came in this morning, and I wrote out I forgot to give them to you. Their apologies, ma'am, from your guests. They're not coming, none of them. Oh, do you think we chose the wrong day? No, ma'am, I think you chose the wrong people. Come along, Roberta I. In a most delightful way. To play today. I thought that we could play your game. What game? It's called A Visit to the Bank. That's not a game, did Daddy agree? And if he did, he must have picked the idea into his head. Um, what an impertinent thing to say! Me putting ideas into other people's heads. Really? Good morning. Thanks. A word? I see Frau von Hustler is coming in again today. Have you made your decision? I believe so, sir. Good, good. Be sure it's the right one. Thank you, signed hand. Her banks, what objections can you have? My security is more than adequate, and Latin America is an expanding market. Have you no courage? What I haven't been able to grasp is what exactly is your final product. What do you think? Money, of course. Yes, money, but I want to make money out of money. Is that enough? Are you man enough to be a banker? <gasps> Mr. Banks, Miss Northbrook's here to see you. Thank you, Sam Hearn. Have you come to a decision, Mr. Banks? It's a town of good people whose future depends on you. I know that. Give us this chance. The factory could be running in weeks and expanding before we'll be years out. Please, Mr. Banks, I give it everything I've got. I believe you, but how can I be sure the money will be safe? What about my workforce? They'll make it safe. I'm sorry, but I... Hello, Hello Daddy! Daddy! What on earth? Can't you see I'm busy? No, we're done, and no man should be too busy for his own children. What do you hear for, young man? Have you come for some money as well? Totally. What would they need money for? Huh. Well, it's never too early to learn its value. I know the value of this. Six pence. No, that's its worth. Do good and may you have good luck. And what do you say to Miss Northbrook? Thank, Thank you. you. I'll wait outside. When I was a little boy, I never dared turn him to my father. Were you ever a little boy? Of, <laughs> of course. And my nanny was Andrews, kept me out of my father's way. What about your mother? I should think so. I saw either of them more than once a week. Then who kissed you goodnight, Miss Andrews? Certainly not. There was no time for hugs and kisses and all that sappy nonsense. Poor daddy. When you invested the bank's money, Daddy, what were you looking for? A good person or a good idea? I should say a good idea, but a good person is much more valuable and much more valuable. Come along, children. Your decision? I've considered your argument, and my answer is no. So you don't recognize a good idea? Perhaps not, but I recognize a good person when I see one. You will regret this, Herr Banks. <gasps> Mrs. Northbrook, when exactly did the new factory open? Thank you, sir. You won't regret this. Tuppence, tuppence, tuppence. 
Hello, Mary. Hello, kids. Hello. Hello. We're off to Mrs. Corey's talking shop. Care to join us? Talking shop? Who's Mrs. Corey? Who's Mrs. Corey? M Mrs. Corey's older than anyone in the whole world. She talked to William before he went off conquering, Vlad before he went paling, and Alexander before he went so great. Shall we go? Yes, we shall, Bert. Come on, children. <laughs> If it isn't Mary Poppins with Jane and Michael Banks. She knows us? How is poor little Georgie? Who? Georgie Banks, your father. He used to give his nanny the slip to come here to my shop in secret. I remember Georgie used to love my gingerbread stars. Now, Mary Poppins, what can I do for you? Well, I did want an ounce of, ounce of conversation. I'm out of conversations, and I'm right out of words, too. Oop. I do have some letters. Well, what words can we make? rat ho -plex. A uh, lato Ferris? Those aren't words. You made them up. And where do you think words came from in the first place? Somebody had to make them up. You know, you can use a letter more than once. Now let me see. Super. Kali. Fragile. Istic. Expi. Allidocious. That's not a word. Of course it's a word. And unless I'm very much mistaken, I think it's a rather useful one. When trying to express oneself, it's frankly quite absurd to leap through lengthy lexicons to find the perfect word. A little spontaneity keeps conversation keen. You need to find a way to say precisely what you mean. Super califragilistic, expialidocious. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, if you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Super califragilistic, expialidocious. But it doesn't mean anything. It can mean anything you want it to. When Stone Age men were chanting, simply grunting, would suffice. In case it's halitosis
George, why on earth are you home so early? Is everything all right? Everything's all wrong. After I refused to loan the bank to make some jar lady, she went to our tea fibers, they gave her all the money she needed, and now it looks like to be a gold mine. Well, they can't expect you to get it right every time. That's exactly what they expect. <laughs> Mary Poppins, you are here to teach the children manners. And just look at them! George, you're tired. Mary Poppins, perhaps you could keep the children occupied in the nursery tonight. Well, I don't want to go to the nursery. Daddy loses his temper and we're shut up in there. Daddy's mean and run and I hate him! Jane, take that back this instant. I will not have you criticize your father that way. Mary Poppins, take the children to the nursery, please. George, if you have troubles, I'd like to share them. Don't worry, you're I've been suspended without salary. Made to decide what to do with me. Why is Dad so cross? Fathers are supposed to look after their children, not yell at them all the time. Maybe, but have you thought who looks after the father when things go wrong? The mothers, I suppose. Not the children. Wouldn't that rather be upside down? Sometimes families are upside down. For a while, anyway. Well, I don't want to be an upside down family. I wish I could run away. Then why don't you? Because you miss. I'm waiting. That's enough, you two. Now into bed at once. Oh, Mary Poppins, I wish you'd just stop. Be careful of the things you, you wish for. Don't you ever stop. You should govern your temper, or your temper will govern you. I'm sick and tired of your stupid sayings and your stupid games. Just get into bed. I won't go to bed and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your information is faulty. Playing the game, having a ball, those who won't play shan't play at all. The smoke is all billowed and curled Between pavement and stars is a chimney sweeps world Where there's oddly no day, no oddly no night That's things off in shadow and off way in light On the rooftops of London Whew, what a sight! Join the sweeps tonight, are we, Bert? Best view in the world, eh? Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chim. A sweep is as, as lucky, lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chim. Good luck will roll off when he shakes hands with you. Or blow me a kiss. Bert! And that's lucky too. You going then? The wind has changed. But they're good kids, Mary. Would I be bothered with them if they weren't? But I can't help them if they won't let me. So? So they have to do the next part on their own. Cheerio, Bert. Keep an eye on them for me. Where's Mary Poppins? Gone. Mrs. Brill, what does or of war mean? Why? Because that's what she's written in her note. Dear Jane and Michael, keep playing games or of war Mary Poppins. French. It means two we meet again. Now come inside before you catch your death. Nowhere is there a more happier crew than them waltzing chim chim churi chim cheru. Chim chim and eat chim chim churi chim cheru. Exactly what it's bringing. Good news or bad, happy or sad, the pendulum keeps swinging. A gentle breeze that blows the trees, it comes in icy blast. The walk has gone, they struggle on, and now 
Tidy. As tidy as I can make it, Mom, seeing as how for the past six weeks I've had all the work to do looking after the children ever since she left. Now I've got all the work to do making the house tidy to welcome her back. If you only knew how hard it was to track her down. Really fancy that, Mom. Mrs. Will, is it hot, is it? Well, I don't know who else. The note says, till we meet again. Oh, George, dear, I do believe you're going to be surprised. Winifred, you know I hate surprises. Oh, George, I do believe you're going to be proud of me. Hurry up, everybody. I want her to find everything spit, spot, spick, and span. Good morning. The Holy Terror! Hello, Miss Andrew. I do hope you had a good journey. It was thoroughly unpleasant. Where did George go? I'm afraid he had an urgent appointment. It's not much of a house, is it? We like it. Then it doesn't take a lot to keep you happy. Look at the dust! There! And the filth! Oh, no, wait, just one minute! Ah, oh, you must be the children. Pity, I don't suppose you know who I am. Yes, we do. You're the holy tailor. Impudent boy! Why aren't you wearing stockings? Because I don't like them. Tut, what manners. I can see there's not a moment to lose. These children have been spoiled. I've arrived here just in time. By chance I've brought the punishment. That rest befits the crime. Brimstone and cake, not on excerpt. These are the tools of my trade. With spoonfuls of sugar, you don't know. Take charge for myself. I won't stand for whining or whinging or whimpering, crying or lying or sobbing or simpering. I fear it's clear that in these two such bad habits look. Fret into throttle, then uncork the bottle. I truly am. I thought it was going to be... What are we going to do? The only thing we can do, run away! What's the man? Who's after you? The nastiest nanny in the world. Surely as bad as all that? She looks like someone that I need it's young. Miss Andrew was Daddy's nanny. Which explains a lot. Poor Daddy, ever since he stopped working, he just sits and mopes. Murray Poppins used to say he needed our help, but now it's too late. I wouldn't say that. I tell you what, why don't we start things off with a shake for good luck? Why would shaking hands with you bring us luck? Has nobody ever told you it's good luck to shake a chimney sweep's hand? Hey. Michael, look! It's a real one! What's the matter? You've always wanted to fly a proper kite. I've always wanted to fly one with Daddy. Well, of course you have. But you need to know how it's done. Get some training and you'll make him the proudest father in the whole blooming empire. With tuppets for paper and strings, you can have your own set of wings. With your feet on the ground, you're a bird in flight with your fists holding tight.
You can do it. Pull one more time. I'm not a sardine in a tin. And where are your coats? We didn't have time to put them on. We ran away. Have you indeed? It's been so awful since he left. Miss Anders come in Daddy's room and we didn't help him like you want us to. Eh, eh. Oh my eye, but your life's a tragedy. Now let's go home and don't dawdle. No, no, she's in there. She came this morning for a surprise for Daddy. Did she? Well, maybe I'll be a surprise for her. Hello, Bert. Hello, Mary. You're a sight for sore eyes. You really are. Welcome back, Mary Poppins. Aren't you going to shake hands with Bob for luck? I don't need any luck. Thank you. Now come along. Not like that, you silly girl. Don't you know how to do anything right? So, you decided to come crawling back, have you? Who are you? I'm Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins? But you left without notice. And I've come back without notice. I see. And what do you expect of me to do? Pack. Pack! <laughs> you insolent young person. How dare you speak to me this way? Just you wait till Mr. Beggs hears about this. You'll be sorry you ever came back. There, that's given her a taste of her own medicine. Mary Poppins, where did you come from? She came from... Michael! Jane, Michael, you're very naughty children. Oh, running off like that, and I should be as angry as anything. If I weren't so glad to see you. Where's Miss Andrew? She's gone. Gone? Why? She didn't give a reason, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. We found this one wandering in the park. <laughs> Good night, ma'am. George? Where is she? Miss Andrew, she left. George, Mary Poppins is back. Is she? Well, well, might I have a word? Things have not gone well for us since you left, Anne. About my wages, sir. If you don't mind, I won't take any right now. I'd rather let them accrue. But if you only knew how many pay if you only knew how many payments were accruing. Now I must get started. Jane, Michael, spit spot. <sighs> now come along, darling. After so many years of good service, you made a wrong decision. What's the worst thing that could happen? One effect. If I'm dismissed from the bank, we'll be broke. We'll still have what really matters, the children and each other. Mary Poppins, is that locket new and what's in it? A portrait. Whose? You'll know when the time comes, and not before. You won't leave us, will you? I'll stay until the chain breaks. What chain? Well. Well, let's wait and see. Now come on. <laughs> What a chimney sweep be. The world's awfully big, isn't it? And what does that tell you? That we're awfully small and unimportant. <laughs> oh, speak for yourself. Not much. Us. But our troubles. They seem so big down in the nursery. But up here. That's more like it. Troubles never seem so difficult when you look at them from just a little higher up. Brush away the dirt and soot. Brush away the tears. Cobwebs that are swept away. Hang around, please.
never miss a chance to get it right. Don't it seem a perfect crime? Don't it seem a shame? When the steps are going as smoothly as they might. Special delivery. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Good night. What's the matter, George? Oh, the chairman wants to see me close the business tonight. Tonight? We might as well face it in just a few hours. And it will have joined the ranks of the unemployed. Are you quite sure? Quite sure, so we'd better make some plans. So that that's where I put them. What are they? Gingerbread stores. I hid them once for my nanny. I used to dream when I grew up. I learned everything there was to know about the stores. Funny, I haven't thought about that in years. I'm not usually sentimental. Well, you know, it's good to look back sometimes, right? It's that popping something she's responsible for all this. I know the person. What's that thing she's always saying? A spoonful of sugar, that is all it takes. It changes bread and water into tea and cakes. A spoonful of sugar goes a long, long way. So have yourself been healthy, helping every day. Well, good luck to you, Governor. Thank you, Bert, and good luck to you, too. Well, we were each given a six pence and we were taught to spend them carefully. Excellent advice. What did you buy of them? Nothing, and we've decided to give them to you. I suppose Mary Poppins be up to this. She hasn't said a word about it. We thought a little bit of extra cash might loosen things up a little bit. Take it or leave it. Thank you, Jane and Michael. Good night, Daddy, and we do love you, you know. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy's really worried, isn't he? Yes, he is. But just know your father loves you very much. And that's far more important than jobs or houses or anything else. Are you going to the bank tonight with Daddy? I'd like to go, but I'm afraid it just isn't possible. Mary Poppins says anything is possible. Do you really believe that, Mary Poppins? Anything. 
Anything can happen if you let it. Sometimes things are difficult, but you can bet it doesn't have to be so. Changes can be made. You can move a mountain if you use a larger spade. Anything can happen, it's a marvel. You can be a butterfly or just stay lava. Stretch your arms beyond fantastic. Dreams are made of strong elastic. turned down the scheme that was bound to make us millions, and we'd like to know why. Then I'll tell you. I turned down Mrs. Von Hustler's scheme because it was harder. She told me about the assets and the profit growth, but where was the word about the people? I apologize for ruining the bank, but I do not apologize for knowing that there's more important things left than making money. My dear chap, Von Hustler's scheme has ruined our rival in the nastiest scandal since records begin. We don't want your apologies. We're offering ours. Oh, my word. And another thing, do you remember giving a loan to a fellow named Northbrook? Well, she's repaying it and building two new factories. With the percent you negotiated, we look set to make a fortune. Oh, my word. Well, that's just it. We hope you tell us how you did it. Just give us the word. It'll be quite safe with us. Give you the word. Oh, I'll give you a word, all right. <laughs> Supercalifragilistic, espialidocious, even a sound of it is up. It's not his fault. It's all because of his nanny, Miss Andrew. <gasps> the holy terror? She's taught me everything I know. Then now's your chance to forget it. Don't worry, darling. I made them make a fortune! Really? By way of recompense, we'd like to offer you the job of senior manager with salary at double. Exactly how much has he made for you? Close your mouth, George. We are not a codfish. And get down from there. Well? I agree on one condition. From now on, my family is first. Agreed? Agreed. Oh, Winifred, I'm afraid I've underestimated you. Oh, George. Anything can happen. when you talk like that. Like what? Like kind and gentle and nothing like you because my puppies do be cross again. Is that the thanks I get for all the trouble I've taken? That's better. Now into bed with the both of you. It's tonight, isn't it? Yes, Bert. Well, goodbye then, Mary. Goodbye, Bert. Look after yourself. With every job that is complete, there is a sense of bittersweet. The moment when you know the task is done. Though in your heart you'd like to stay, to help. Crack the 
practically perfect, and I hope it remains so. Look! It's Mary Poppins, look it! Oh, the chain, it's broken. Look, don't you remember or stay until the chain breaks? What's inside? It's a picture of the three of us, and it's signed. To Jane and Michael, with a good deal of love from Mary Poppins. Where's Mary Poppins? She's gone. Gone? How to tell you? She'll be back. But in the meantime, what do you think of this? It's the best I've ever seen. Can we fly it together? Oh, Daddy. She won't be coming back. And that's for sure. How could you say it like that, Miss Lydia? Because we don't need her, not anymore, and other families will. Won't they, Daddy? They will. I wonder if she's right, George, and we really could do without a Daddy. What do you think? I think you better dance with me. Oh, George, this is serious. Look, it's a shooting star. We should wish on it. I think we can do a 